Good evening. Welcome everyone to our annual Blue Christmas service as we uh, recognize the reality that uh, during this time of the year, while the expectation culturally and many times personally is that everyone is happy and joyous and full of good cheer for many, many people, that is simply uh, not the case. Uh, it is a very difficult time of year for a lot of people. And in recognition of that, we offer this service as an opportunity to uh, have uh, a quiet moment in the midst of uh, the craziness of the season to uh, seek God's peace and God's strength as we uh, work our way through this time of the year. And so we uh, will begin in just a moment uh, if you are uh, watching the service live, or if you are uh, enjoying the service at a later date, uh, you are invited to go to our website and to uh, download the bulletin. Uh, it is a PDF file, so you can just keep it open on your computer, or you can print out a personal copy. It's just on regular eight and a half by 11 pages, uh, so you can just use regular print paper at home uh, to print it out. And that'll be a, a big help in terms of being able to follow along. Uh, so uh, I invite you to, to do that if you haven't done so already. All right. Uh, joining me, of course, is my wife, Jenny. And uh, we have uh, Wendy Roth in, uh, in the sanctuary here with us. Um, and she'll be playing along on organ. And uh, so we'll offer this service to you tonight. So we begin with the greeting from the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Grace and peace be with you all. And also with you. And now we sing together the hymn of light. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, 
and you set light in the sky to govern night and day, and a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. You led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory. To your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah. The introduction to the lesson. This poem promises deliverance from Assyrian oppression, a hope based on the birth of a royal child with a name full of promise. While Judah's king will practice justice and righteousness, the real basis for faith lies in God's passion for the people. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The reading. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning in the first verse. The introduction to the lesson. In grand flowing poetic lines, the prophet announces that the exile of God's people in Babylon is over. God will deliver Israel and will care for her as a shepherd cares for the sheep. This word can be trusted because the only enduring reality in life is the word of God. The reading. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The third reading is taken from the 11th chapter of Matthew. 
in the face of religious authorities who needlessly created extra burdens on the people of God for their own benefit, Jesus offers a way in which he himself takes on the heavy lifting of salvation. Jesus says, Come to me, all that you are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The fourth reading is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. John begins his Gospel with this prologue, I him to the word through whom all things were created. This word became flesh and brought grace and truth to the world. John writes, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. So we come again to a holiday season, a Christmas season in the midst of a pandemic. And uh, now the pandemic uh, has uh, been going on uh, for uh, almost two years. Uh, we know that the virus was detected over two years ago for the first time and and then within months uh, began to spread throughout the world and, and changed our lives. And last year we, we uh, were still uh, without vaccines and we were still um, in the midst of uh, another surge and things seemed bleak and yet we had a, a sense of hope that, uh, that perhaps soon the, the pandemic would be over once uh, people started getting vaccinated and uh, the, the virus burned itself out. And it, it certainly seemed that way at the beginning of this past summer. And then, of course, the, uh, the Delta variant uh, arose and, and uh, set us back again. And, and now, even now, in the midst of, of uh, the, what seemed to be uh, the Delta variant uh, going away or, or starting to go away, yet another variant is, is now a concern. So we've experienced many things over the last couple of years that on top of the normal or typical struggles of this season just adds more and more. And so uh, I sense uh, in, in a lot of ways more frustration this year than last year. Last year was the, the first Christmas of the pandemic. And while people knew that uh, it was uh, not the same kind of holiday season, the hope is that it would be the only holiday season impacted by the pandemic. But now we're in yet another holiday season and we are still in the pandemic. And of course, as I said, the holiday seasons in general can be a very trying time. There is a lot of expectation that people are happy that people are joyous, that, that people are merry, that people are glad, that people get along, that uh, people have the opportunities to celebrate and to rest. And yet the, the impact of the holiday expectations can be very overwhelming to a lot of people especially people in systems in which it seems that the burden of preparation 
does not fall evenly on those within a family system or within uh, a workplace or within a, a school or within uh, a church, a congregation, or another religious community, that, the, that some people seem to have to do more and they have an, a difficulty in, in getting into the holiday spirit that they almost sacrifice their own happiness for the sake of others and yet seem to be overlooked and, and ignored and not appreciated. So it can be very difficult for, for people in situations like that. And then, of course, uh, we uh, have the, the reality that um, as every year, many people suffer a, a loss of a loved one uh, here in this year of the second year of the pandemic, hundreds of thousands of, of people have died that may not have died except for the pandemic and people of all ages. And now families are faced with the reality that there's a, a missing person at, uh, at the house, a missing person around the tree, uh, a missing person at the, the table for Christmas dinner, or maybe more than one person. And so the, the, the sadness can be magnified. So this really is a time in which we as God's people are called to, to be sensitive and to see again the world through God's eyes. And here is the, uh, the great secret, it seems, about Christmas that our society seems to, to forget. And it's, it's not a war on Christmas or, or anything like that, but it's simply this truth. There is a Christmas because the world is broken. If you feel like the brokenness of the world, the brokenness of the systems, the brokenness of your own heart and mind and soul ruins the Christmas season, you have actually turned it upside down. Jesus came to earth because of your brokenness. Jesus came to us because of the darkness. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, not because we were right with God, but because we were wrong with God. All humanity. And we all need a Savior. When we deal with the brokenness, when we deal with the frustrations, when we deal with the pain and the hurt and the grief and the sadness, that is the reason for Christmas. And Christmas, the, the true meaning of Christmas is not to, to wallpaper over those things, to, to hide it under wrapping paper but is to acknowledge it, to celebrate the birth of, of the one whose life means and death means that all those things that trouble us during this holiday season and throughout the rest of the year, those things don't have the last word in our lives. Those things are not permanent. Those things are not eternal. Those things are not that which determines our ultimate fate. Instead, God has the last word. The word became flesh and lived among us. God's word is first and last. And so that's, that's the secret meaning of Christmas. It seems like 
it should be the, the primary meaning of Christmas, but we've uh, taken over this holiday and, and added a lot of extra expectations to it and a lot of other celebrations to it, and it's a lot of times we miss that. But that's what this service is about, this blue Christmas service, is an opportunity to be reminded, for me to remind you, for you to remind yourself, for all of us to remind each other that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, not because the world was great, but because the world was broken. And Jesus lived and died and lived again for each of us, individually, as families, as congregations, as societies, as, as nations, as, as the world. That is what we celebrate when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Peace on earth and goodwill to all humanity. Now, we struggle to live up to that. Not just during the hurricane, uh, hur uh, hurricane. Not just during the holiday season, it can seem like a hurricane season. But not just during the holiday season, but throughout the year. But again, that's what grace is about. So, folks, whether you are a member of this congregation of Grace Lutheran Church here in Clearwater, Florida, or you are just someone who stumbled upon this this video down the road, a few days from now, a few weeks from now, a few years from now, maybe even. Just know this. God loves you. God loves you first, and God loves you last. And the sign of that love is that babe in Bethlehem. So now we will sing another couple of songs and we'll spend some time in prayer, and we will entrust this holiday season in our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our celebrations to our God, who sees us for who we really are and knows both our joys and our pains, knows our knows those things for which we are grateful and knows those things for which we grieve. So now, let us continue with our service in which we seek God's peace and God's strength. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we now sing... Uh, the hymn based on uh, our second reading uh, from Isaiah chapter 40, Comfort, Comfort, Now Me People. Uh, in the bulletin, you'll see that there are three verses printed. We're only singing verses one and three. So let's sing it together. Shed a 
bride, and all flesh shall see the token that God's word is never broken. We now will begin the prayers and we'll alternate uh, the prayers. I'm going to move the camera over a little bit. There we go. And uh, so we'll uh, pray these together. And uh, many of the prayers, uh, all of the prayers, well, many of the prayers have an opportunity for additional prayers. So we'll we'll leave a, a little time of, of silence so that you can add your own prayers. Uh, in response to these prayers for which, uh, that we've prepared for you. We pray for those of us who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Be with those who struggle with the reality of their own emotional state and the expectations of the holiday season, especially those we name now with our lips or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have been traumatized by the ravages of COVID-19, those who have gotten sick, those who have lost people they love, those who have lost employment or income, those who have missed unique moments in life, and those who live in constant danger due to their profession or other circumstance including those we name now with our lips or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our nation and society as we continue to experience division and distrust after contentious political campaigns, trials, health measures, and other experiences. Help us to mend broken friendships, partnerships, marriages, and family bonds due to disagreements that can be further amplified during the holiday season. We pray especially for those we name now with our lips or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation and the whole church around the world as we seek to emerge from the dangers and limitations of this pandemic. Help us to be patient, faithful, creative, and careful as we move into an uncertain future. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for all of those who help us to overcome all of these challenges. Therapists and counselors, researchers and medical trial participants, nurses and doctors, civic leaders and representatives, bishops and other religious leaders, teachers and administrators, friends and family. Through each of them, your light shines and in each of them, your image is revealed. We give you thanks, especially for those we name now with our lips or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray in the language closest to our hearts. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Amen. We now sing, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, the, the two verses printed in the bulletin. everyone. Thank you for participating in this, and we hope and pray that this has been uh, a helpful and healing opportunity for you. It is our gift to you and, and to, uh, to the world, uh, this little moment of, of peace and, uh, and hope. And so uh, take care, and as I've been saying at the end of uh, all of our in-person services now that we've started them here at Grace Lutheran Church. Be safe and be kind. Amen. Take care, everyone.